Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming out as we tape our service for August the 9th. Big thank you to Carsa as she's agreed to come out and supply the music for us today, and for Reverend Catherine to be our presider as well. Our service this morning will begin on page 45. with the penitential rite. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship. On page 49, I invite you to join with me in the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Now we have the readings. the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered, O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron. Until what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him, and the ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom, that they might keep his statutes and observe his, lord, his laws. Praise the Lord. reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. 
But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news to good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Immediately, Jesus made, made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And now we join in the hymn, Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Thank you. of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In looking at our gospel reading today, we could look at so many different aspects of the story, and of course one of them would be Peter's failure. Yes, Peter is bold and brash. These qualities are often a source of Peter's troubles but they are also some of his successes. And so while Peter asks, or maybe even demands, to come out to accompany his Lord among the 
waves and eagerly climbs over the edge of the boat, he soon falters. Where did all that brash confidence go? You and I know from the reading, it was cast aside with the flicker of his eyes as he glanced away from Jesus and looked instead at the strength of the sea. We know Peter should have kept his eyes on Jesus. And you know what? The same goes for you and I. We know we should keep our eyes upon Jesus and we can trust, but do we do it? My problem, and I'm sure it is yours as well, that no matter how hard I try, I seem to get distracted, worried, even overwhelmed at times by the waves all around me. Family, financial pressures, political pressures, social, medical issues. I can find things to worry about just about anywhere. And while I know that I should trust them all to Jesus, it just isn't that easy. You know, and I know that as well. So truthfully, hearing that we should trust sometimes doesn't always help. We sometimes still forget. So instead of emphasizing Peter's failure and even ours, I want us to look at Jesus. Look and see what Jesus actually does when Peter takes his eyes off of him and begins to sink. It's right there in verses 31 of chapter 14. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. Well, just listen to the following story that will illustrate a little bit about reaching out that hand. A pastor, when he was nine, went hiking with his brothers and sisters, some cousins and an uncle. They came to some steep terrain and ended up in a cave of sorts. They ventured in and could see a hole up above, which they figured led out into the edge that they were hiking to. The path through the cave narrowed until the pastor was the only one small enough to climb any further. Bold and brash, as typical of a nine-year-old, he eagerly climbed further to investigate. And just before reaching his head out of the hole, his foot slipped and he fell. It may be all of 10 feet, though it felt like 30. It was over in a terrifying heartbeat as his uncle caught him. His uncle was down below, reached out his arms and grabbed him, hold of him. The pastor was so pleased that feeling was over. He was just ecstatic that he was caught. I wonder if that's what Peter felt like when Jesus reached out his hand. He didn't need to be told to look to Jesus anymore. What else could he do? That's the thing about the gospel. It doesn't just tell us to do something. It makes it possible to do it. Sometimes it actually means it seems impossible not to. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. There it is, the whole point of this story for me. Yes, Peter should have kept his eyes on Jesus, and so should you and I. But we don't. If we're truthful with ourselves, we don't. When we falter or even fall, Jesus is there to grab us, to catch us, to support us, to set us up straight again, ready to give it another go. That is good news. Now I want you to take a minute and imagine Peter's excitement as he saw Jesus coming towards the boat. 
Just imagine that as he was there seeing him coming. Yeah, maybe they thought he was a ghost. But take his excitement, the eagerness to join Jesus amidst the waves. And then remember those big waves. The waves that you and I had. The waves of worries and concerns and anxieties that we carry. In the middle of that, maybe we could even reach out and grab each other as we remember verse 31 of chapter 14. Even though it may be hard to do it right now, but we all have our social bubbles that we can do that. I do know that there's something remarkable about being touched, about being grabbed hold of. That's in keeping with the experience of this story. I am one of those people who love hugs and I have to admit, I miss it terribly in this keeping our six feet apart. But you know, as disciples of Christ, we are called to reach out our hand. Jesus isn't simply our guide or life coach. He's our savior, the one who does for us what we cannot. The Lord who walks atop the sea in this story, not only directs the wind and wave, but also death and life. This Jesus wants more than to command our attention. He wants to save our lives, and he has promised to do just that. Amen. Amen. As we remember, God reaches out to us and calls us to reach out to others. Let us uh, do, say the Hear, O Israel, on the top of page 53. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We'll have the prayers of the people. Faithful, compassionate, and loving God. We gather before you to pray for the church, the world, and all in need, saying, God of grace, hear our prayer. God of grace, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the church, the body of Christ on earth. We pray for your appointed leaders, Archbishop Justin, Pope Francis, our primate Linda, and our diocesan administrators. Send us all to proclaim your word, so that others may hear, and hearing that they may believe. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, you created the seas and the wind. We endure hurricanes and tornadoes, but you quiet the seas and silence the wind. We thank you for the splendor around us, for the abundance of the oceans and clean water. We thank you for the source of clean power from the wind. Restore your creation to the perfection and beauty you spoke into being. God of grace, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the people and leaders of nations grappling with global pandemic on top of conflict, corruption, and disaster. But we know we use apparent failures or terrible circumstances for good things and send help when least expected by the least expected. So let us affirm our trust in you. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Compassionate God, you are always with us in the storms of our lives. We pray for those unemployed, estranged from family, grieving a loss or diagnosis. Calm the anxiety and terror swirling within. We pray for those who are ill, for Sylvia, Ralph, Rick, and those we name now. Bring healing, strength, and comfort. God of grace, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the ministry of Reverend Judy, Reverend Catherine, and Reverend Gordon on this day and every day. 
We pray for Father Melanie and her growing family. We pray for discernment for our mission. When we become distracted and fearful and lose our trust in your loving kindness, let us hear, it is I, do not be afraid. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for those who have gone before us, whose faith in you did not falter in times of stress and discouragement. Remind us of their faithful witness and that their example may inspire our daily witness. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Faithful, loving, and compassionate God, we bring these prayers and others too deep for words into your gracious, eternal care through your most precious Son, Jesus Christ. Carson to play uh, the hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now may the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases us through Jesus Christ, what pleases him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And uh, for you out in the uh, out in the land who was kind of seeing this and if you look or are able to see in behind uh, they're all wearing their masks and that's going to be something different as we come back to church and we're hoping god willing if all goes well uh, september the 13th will start to be having in-person worship just remembering it's going to look differently going to be a little bit different when you come back the social distance the wearing of the mask through the whole service no singing it's different isn't it people it's uh the new norm i guess um not quite sure how it's all going uh i know uh claire and her husband have been going to petite Revere there and getting a bit used to what worship is like, but you know, we can still worship. We're together. 
were um, pray together, hum when you play the music, and to hear the word, um, it's still there. And all of that is so important. Catherine, thank you. Thank you again for coming out on such a, I'm going to say, folks, for a beautiful evening for this to be taped. I appreciate it so much for taking the time. It's just a joy to be here. And if you notice, Reverend Catherine and I, we decided not to wear our robes tonight because I've had such a bad week or two weeks with this heat. And I thought, no, I don't want to pass out. So this is why it's just with our stalls in. God bless us all. Thank you for joining us as we worship together. And we'll see you next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.